The Netherlands has a long history of war against water. It's a flat coastal country, and basically one giant river delta. But the Dutch, masters of water management and engineering, have not only been able to keep their head above water for centuries when otherwise large portions of the country would be submerged, they've used their skills to use water to defend their country. This story of innovative warfare and the leveraging of a country's geography, which saved a city and a larger uprising that led to the Netherlands' independence, doesn't deserve to be broken up. So first, I want to go ahead and share with you today's sponsor. The Netherlands continues to innovate to prevent flooding. Because of climate change and the rising sea levels that come with it, the country has no choice. Climate change, geopolitical conflict, rising inflation. By most projections, in 20 years, the world will be vastly different, and not entirely for the better. Cost of living is on the rise across the globe, and the usual contingency plans aren't holding up how they used to. Take stocks and bonds, the cornerstones of most portfolios, and a key part of any wealth building strategy. They've lost $36 trillion in the last nine months. That's more than the GDP of the entire USA. So in this vastly changed landscape, do you have an improved plan in place? The experts do. Institutions like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley are investing more and more billions of dollars into real, tangible assets. Not just precious metals or real estate, but also fine art. As a real asset, the value of art is less likely to be affected by things like stock losses or inflation. The numbers speak for themselves. The average painting is selling for 26% more at auction compared to this time last year. That's why the average retail investor's portfolio is down 44%. With Masterworks, investors like you and I can invest in multi-million dollar paintings for a fraction of the cost. In October, Masterworks sold a painting for a 21.5% net return. That's the sixth out of the last seven exits with a net return over 20%. Over 20% net returns, even in 2022. It's easy to see why over 550,000 people have signed up so far, and paintings have sold out in mere minutes but my subscribers can get priority access at the link in the description. The year was 1574. The Spanish Empire and the provinces that today make up the Netherlands had been at war since 1566. The conflict is now known as the Eighty Years' War, or the Dutch War of Independence. And at the center of the conflict was the city of Leiden. The city had been under siege by the Spanish for an entire year, with only a short break in April and May of 1574. The leader of the Dutch rebels, William, Prince of Orange, attempted to relieve the city by sending an army under the command of his brother, Louis of Nassau. The force was primarily made up of German mercenaries, 6,500 infantry and 3,000 cavalry. The group started taking heavy losses before even reaching its destination, more than a thousand men deserted, and 700 were killed by the Spanish in a night attack. The Spanish then lifted the siege to counter Louis' advance. It was a clear victory for the Spanish. They killed nearly 3,000 men. Among the dead were Louis himself and his brother Henry. The Dutch were unable to pay the rest of the men, and so they dispersed. The Spanish resumed the siege two months after it had been lifted. Unfortunately, the city brought in little food during the short break, even though they were warned by the Prince of Orange that the Spanish would return, and now restocking was impossible. The citizens suffered just as they had before the siege was lifted. By August of 1574, over a third of the city's roughly 18,000 inhabitants had either starved to death or died of disease. With the high mortality rate, Louis' army beaten, and no chance of food coming in the city, Morale was extremely low. Its citizens understandably rioted. Time was running out, but the Prince of Orange was determined to save the city. If Leiden was lost, the Spanish may take others, and the Netherlands' hope of independence would be lost as well. He sent a carrier pigeon into the city, pleading for it to hold out for three months. With the large losses in his available forces, he couldn't take the Spanish head-on in conventional warfare. So the Prince of Orange steadily built a force of about 15,000 men. Among them were the Sea Beggars. These were pirates that made a living robbing ships in the North Sea. But there was an obvious problem. These pirates couldn't sail to Leiden. There was no large body of water to use as transport. This tapestry, made in the years shortly following the siege, shows what happened next. 
On August 3, 1574, the Prince of Orange broke dikes on the Meuse River, letting the water come in and flood Netherlands' flat land. Citizens that lived on the flooded land weren't exactly happy, but it was a sacrifice they would have to make for the revolution, though they weren't really given much of a choice. The citizens of Leiden sent another message to the prince. They wrote that they had waited the three months and were ready to surrender. The prince replied that the dikes had been broken and they would be relieved shortly. But the water was slow to flow in. It wasn't going to be high enough to flush out the Spanish or for the sea beggars to reach Leiden anytime soon. On top of this, the prince became violently ill and didn't recover until the 1st of September. When the expedition finally did get moving, it turned out that the prince didn't have accurate information on the landscape. More dikes would need to be broken on their route to Leiden, which were defended by the Spanish. But the Dutch soldiers faced resistance in stride, and locals joined in wearing white armbands to identify themselves as allies. Slowly but surely, the expedition was making its way there. But the citizens were growing impatient. They called on their mayor to surrender. But the mayor probably had the Spanish massacres at Narda and other cities that surrendered on his mind. He wanted to hold out a little bit longer. He bravely offered his own body as food. The citizens shamefully took back their demand, for the moment at least. But once again, things weren't looking good for the prince's forces. They were stuck. The only place where the water was deep enough to take them the rest of the way to Leiden was a narrow canal which then connected to a lake. But the canal was guarded by 3,000 Spaniards. It was an impossible task to take on. The Spanish were ready to attack the weakened city. But a Dutch woman named Madalena Moons promised to marry the Spanish army commander Francisco de Valdez if he would delay the attack just one more night. And he agreed. But he made a mistake. A miracle happened. On October 1st, heavy rains fell and strong winds quickly drove water over land through the broken dikes. The water was high enough for the sea beggars to make it to Leiden without the need for the canal. A loud crash could be heard just outside of Leiden on the next night, as the prince's forces were creeping closer. Fearing another dike had just been broken and their camp would be flooded, the Spanish commander ordered his men to quickly retreat. The Spaniards left in such a rush, they left behind equipment, tools, and a warm pot of stew called Hutspot. But as it turns out, that loud noise was actually a part of the wall of Leiden that had fallen. It had been eroded by the water, which had left the city completely vulnerable to attack had the Spanish not retreated. The Dutch had won. When the prince and the sea beggars arrived at Leiden on October 3rd, they fed the starving citizens bread and herring. Leiden went on to have a global reach, arguably because of this victory. The Prince of Orange founded Leiden University in 1575 as a reward to the city for its defense against the Spanish. The university is the oldest institution of higher education in the Netherlands and is consistently placed in the top 50 worldwide in 13 fields of study and is associated with 16 Nobel Prize winners, including Albert Einstein, who was a visiting professor in 1920. In the 17th century, the city was arguably the most important textiles center in the world. Home workers spun and wove over 180 different kinds of fabrics of all different colors and patterns. It's also a commonly held belief that the pilgrims fleeing from religious persecution in England fled straight to the New World, but they actually found refuge in Leiden first, many of which worked in the textile industry, and the hard work and low pay involved has been cited as a possible cause for wanting to leave for the New World. Today, the city of Leiden remembers the day of victory with a festival. On the evening of October 2nd, Hutspot, the dish found in the Spanish troops camp, is served on a street in the center of the city. And on the morning of October 3rd, herring and white bread is served, the meal the sea beggars handed out. I hope you enjoyed this story about the Netherlands using water as a weapon. But this wasn't the last time they'd do something like this. In the next video about the Netherlands, we'll look at another impressive example, but this time it was specifically engineered for that very purpose. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to all my Patreon and YouTube members, and thank you all for watching. 